What's up creators, it's your boy, Matt and Mike. And on today's episode, we're gonna be reassembling the new nine and a quarter rear end that we got for the Plymouth Cuda project car. As well, we're gonna reveal what blew up. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned and check it out. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Ha, dare to be you. This world is just a canvas to our imagination. Turn a figment of your mind into creation. Alrighty, welcome to the Mad Lab, guys. This is the 1974 Plymouth Barracuda project car. If you're new to the channel, you're gonna to want to subscribe because we're gonna be documenting the entire build on this car, as well as we have some other crazy cars, dirt bikes and stuff that we build from time to time here in the Mad Lab. So you're definitely gonna to want to subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for that. But on today's episode, we just picked up this new nine and a quarter rear end for the Cuda project. I had originally a seven and a quarter, which is right here. When I first picked this car up, it was literally just the shell. There was no doors, no hood, no trunk, nothing. And the rear end that was in the car was just a seven and a quarter rear end. I think just used as a dummy rear end to move the car around. The leaf springs were just sitting in there. They weren't even bolted up. All the bushings are shot on the shackle side and down here. The rear end was literally just sitting in the car and it had some random uh, rims and tires bolted onto it because it's I think a four inch bolt pattern, which these are four and a half. So the seven and a quarter definitely has to go, even though this is a posi rear end, meaning when you spin the one wheel, it spins the other wheel in the same direction. The seven and a quarter rear end is not gonna work for our application because we have this. It's a 1979 440 big block that we yanked out of a motorhome. You heard me, it's out of an RV, uh, Dodge Sportsman, I believe, or something like that. And we are going to be putting this inside the Cuda. So we got a big block with a seven and a quarter, which isn't gonna work. So that's why we picked up this nine and a quarter rear end. This is gonna be plenty strong for all that power out of the 440 and we're gonna have to rebuild the inside. Why? Well, I ended up finding this nine and a quarter rear end on Facebook Marketplace. I messaged a girl and she said that everything was in great working condition, that it had posi, and she didn't know why it was pulled out of her car. So I made the 10 hour road trip to go pick it up. It was frozen to the ground on the farm floor. Not a big deal, it was minus 20 out, and that's generally what happens in the winter here in Canada. Things get frozen to the ground. Well, I went to go to try to spin the axle and it wouldn't spin. So I'm like, huh, maybe there's just some ice on it and the drums are frozen or something was going on. So her husband and I loaded it up into the back of the truck and I was able to spin it about a quarter turn. I saw both wheels spin. So I'm like, bonus, sweet. I got a posi rear end for a great price for the Barracuda project car. I drove home and when I got home, I went to go spin the axle again. It spun, awesome, and then it jammed up. And I was like, what the heck is going on here? Spun it backwards, spun it forward, it rotated and then jammed again. So that's when I started to sweat. On these rear ends, when you have posi or like a sheer grip and you spin one axle, the other axle will spin in the same direction. That way you got two wheel peel. This is where your drive shaft comes into and when you spin it, both of your wheels should spin in the same direction. Well, like I was saying, I would spin this, it would spin a little bit and then jam up. Then I would back spin it and then it would jam up. So I knew something was wrong inside the case. I pulled the drums off and everything inside of the drums looked in good condition, still had good pads, all the springs and everything is still there. So I knew that that wasn't the problem. It was something internally. And sure enough, what did I find when I pulled off the case? Well, for one, a bunch of dirty ass oil. And secondly, yep, blew up. The whole center section or the, the posi unit, the share grip, whatever you want to call this, the locker differential, I don't know what you call it, but this was just all scattered out on the inside of the rear end. And if you look here, this is your center pin. Yeah, check that out. That's like three quarters of an inch thick and it is just bent right in half almost. So when you look in here, this is where your spider gears and everything go, and that center pin comes through here, which spins both axles. Uh, you can find used ones for decent prices, so we'll figure out what we're gonna do there. So it kinda sucks that that happened, but I believe the ring gear is still good. Nothing is scored there, and everything else is spinning nicely and looks like it's in good condition. The axles are still straight. They weren't bent, which is good, but yeah. 
The whole locker unit on this rear end is all blown up, which really sucked because she said it was in good working condition, which clearly it's not. I wish people were just more honest and knew what they were selling and completely honest and transparent about it. This clearly was blown up, so that sucks for me. And I wish she told me that it wasn't in great working condition because I wouldn't have made the 10 hour drive to go get it. Check that out. When the pin jammed and bent, it actually warped this entire housing. That is insane. That is thick, thick steel. And this is heavy duty to get bent like that. All these internal spider gears are all chewed up. You can see there, they're missing some teeth and whatnot. So that really sucks for me. But the good news is that the bearings uh, are all still good where the axles go into and whatnot. So I got lucky there. The housing is still good. Brake assembly is still good. So I'm just gonna have to rebuild it. I have never worked on a rear end before in my life. This is the first one I've ever taken apart and reassembled. So it's kind of a big learning experience for me, but I'm absolutely loving it. I love learning new things, especially when it comes to cars and how things work. So let's start reassembling it. And if I have any tips that I learned from taking the rear end apart, I'll make sure to share them with you guys. Alrighty, so first things first, all these broken parts, we're not gonna be able to use. We're just gonna put all those back in there. And uh, the center section, I'm just gonna have to use these busted up gears, get them in there kind of loosely. And I'm gonna try to have to uh, just wobble this bent pin back in just to hold everything in place temporarily so I can put the rear end underneath the car for mock-up purposes. So yeah, we're gonna see how this all goes back together. Basically, I'm gonna install this first with my bearings and these here, once I have these on, I'll be able to put that whole unit inside and then I'll be able to put my caps on and then inside here, sometimes you usually have shims, but in this case, these are adjustable. So these spin in and out and they have threads on them and these will spin in and out to give you your backlash and uh, which is kind of trick. But at first it was really confusing because I didn't know how to get the center section out of the rear end because usually there's shims here and it'll just fall right out. And I couldn't for the life of me pull it out. I did look online and some guys have a big socket that fits all the way through here that connects into here and spins this. But I don't have that big ass socket and what I did realize that there's these little tiny portholes here on the side. And if you see there, you can get access to these little holes. And if you stick a screwdriver through there, you can start to spin them and back them out or back them in. So we'll go ahead, we'll grab the center section, which is this guy. We'll shove it in there with the bearings. Bam. And then we'll put our caps, bearing caps on top. And once the bearing caps are on top, but that's what these little clips here are for. They'll hold your uh, bearings in place. So let's start installing the center section and then piece by piece, we'll just start slapping this nine and a quarter rear end back together. So I got the center section loosely in place. The clamps holding the uh, bearings are just roughly in right now. So what I'm gonna do is grab my screwdriver, go inside this little tiny hole here, and start backing out these threaded uh, adjusters on each side, kind of crushing the bearing over, putting a little bit of tension onto the bearing, which is called, I believe it's called backlash. And right now we're not trying to shim it or get that backlash to be perfect. I just want to snug that up then I can tighten down these bearing caps. You guys can see here that back and forth, there's movement left to right. And when I'm sticking this screwdriver inside of this little tiny hole here, I'm grabbing those little tiny dots on that threaded piece that's kind of shimming out on the bearings. So as I go left to right, that'll start to center up the gear. And uh, I think when you go ahead and do this, you gotta put paint marker on here and make sure that it's rubbing off equally on the gear here and the main gear off your drive shaft. So I'm just gonna keep 
winding these out left and right. Right now, obviously, I'm not dialing it in perfectly. I just wanna get rid of that slack and then it can tighten up these bearing caps. Now I can go ahead and install this clip, which will go like that. Once you've adjusted your backlash, these clips will go on and just keep it from uh, spinning out. So I'll get one on each side here. We'll loosely snug these up. And then I believe we can slide the axles in, kind of straighten out all these gears on the inside. Make sure the axles go through the splines. Put our main pin in, which is all bent up. So one thing I did when I was pulling the whole rear end apart and I pulled the axles out, bam, focus. You can see that little center punch mark. I also marked the caps, the bearings, everything on the right side. So when I reassemble it, I know what left and right is. It's a good thing to do. We are now ready to slide the axles in and try to seat the splines onto those spider gears. And then we can shove the center pin through and we're pretty much done with assembling the rear end. So after I finish getting this rear end assembled, I'm gonna give you guys an update of what I've done to the underside of the Plymouth Cuda. I spent the entire weekend grinding and removing all the undercoat and rust on the bottom side of the car. So yeah, let's finish up, put in the axles, then I'll give you guys an update on the underside of the car. Okay, so I got both the axles slid into place and I just put my center pin, if you guys can see that, let me move the light. And what I did was I just put that center pin in so that the spider gears don't fall out because I am missing one of the gears and uh, I was able to get them into the splines. So now what I'm gonna do is pull this pin out and then these axles I can push in a little bit more and I'll grab these C-clips once this pin is out, I'll be able to slide the C-clips on, then I'll be able to push the axles out and drop the pin back in place. And when the pin's in place, it'll keep these axles from being able to move back and forth, and these clips basically are what hold the axles in place. So let's go ahead, pull the pin out, push the axle in, slide these clips on, and then put the pin back in. Alrighty, so we'll spin this down. We'll remove this pin which is completely bent. That takes a lot of force to do that. Now, when I slide this back up, and you can see inside there, I'm gonna push on the axle, and this will move forward so I can get those C-clips on. So let's go ahead, reach over here, push that in, we'll grab one of our C-clips, and now you can see that I pushed that through. You can see the little recess on the shaft. We're gonna take this clip, slide it on top of there, and then we'll be able to push the axle back. Do the same to this side here. So I'll hold the camera as I push on the axle. Hopefully you guys can see. There we go. So you can see the splines coming through there. We'll grab our second clip and we will. All right, so we have the C clip on the left side, so we will push that back. Now that those two clips are on, we can grab our pin and reinsert it. Look how mangled that is. Wow, that takes a lot of force. I can't believe this girl that sold me this said that it was in perfect running condition and that she could drive the car. I highly doubt that. Well, let's do a little tappy tappy. This thing here is so bent up. Just make sure it's not gonna hit the center gear. Nice, okay. So that is spinning left and right. There's no movements. And that is basically it, guys. If this pin was good, that pin would go on the side there, hold that down. And then from there, all these screws here are basically for the cover. And that is how you assemble a nine and a quarter rear end. Sure, I didn't adjust the backlash and all this and that. Again, this is just for mock-up, guys. So let's go ahead, we'll bolt up the cover. And just
just like that, we have the rear end all assembled. Back cover is on. In case you guys are curious what the back end of the nine and a quarter Chrysler rear end looks like, that's what it looks like. It's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 bolt on the cover. Let's go ahead, grab these drums. So check this out guys, got the drums on and when I spin this one, the other side should spin in the same direction. So I don't know if you guys can see that there. So when I spin this one this way, that one should spin the same way. There you have it. That's a posi. Two wheel deal, baby. Sweet. That is awesome. I am stoked on that. Woo! Stoked on that. It's all reassembled. It does suck that I have to replace all the locker, the posi assembly on the inside. It's expensive, but I got a pretty good deal on the entire housing. I don't have to replace the brakes. They're still in good condition. So overall for a nine and a quarter rear end for what I paid for it, I'm pretty happy about that. So over the weekend, I ground down the entire underside of the car with a grinder and a drill with a wire wheel on the end. I had a ton of different wire wheels that I was using. So let's crawl underneath here and I'll kind of show you the underside of the car and show you just how bad the driver's side frame rail is, as well as how good the floor on the trunk and the underside is in the car. But yeah, I'm stoked. Check out that interior there, guys. Mocked that up the other day and got the seats, back seats, dash, steering wheel, everything in. I'll grab the creeper. Bam, bam, bam. I'll grab a light so we can see. I also twisted my ankle on Friday, so that really sucked. That's why I ended up just grinding the entire underside of the car was, I can't walk around, but I could lie down. So grinding the underside of the car was a perfect thing to do over the weekend. You can see the frame rail. I removed all the undercoat and all the surface rust, and I can really get a good idea of just how rotted out they might be. In this case, on the passenger side, the frame rail is in great condition where the leaf springs bolt up, everything is good. But I am gonna have to replace the backside of the frame rail. No big deal, I'm just gonna grab some tube and make some new mounts for the leaf springs on both the driver's side and the passenger side. But let's check out the floor. So you can see on the bottom of the trunk floor, it is next to mint. There's a little bit of pitting right there, but overall, the trunk floor is in great condition. So that's what all the surface rust looks like. When I started all over the trunk, I've have yet to do this back panel here, but once you get all that surface rust off, you're left with bare steel. You can even start to see all the part numbers coming through. The back uh, seat area is not rotted through, which is great. The tunnel is in mint condition. Coming through here, you can see just how nice all that stuff clean cleaned up. Got rid of all the undercoat and all the rust. So there's no holes there. Driver side frame rail on the rear, and obviously it's got extensive rot and rust. No big deal. I'm a fabricator, so I'll just cut all that stuff out and plate it up with some new fresh steel. I could go ahead and replace this entire frame rail, but I don't feel like doing that because if I box it in with some thick like 1 8th or 1 16th plate, um, it's overkill for it. And I'm just gonna strengthen it right up which will be good because that big 440 is going to have a lot of torque. So I'll just box all that frame rail in. But underneath the car, I don't know if we can see here. Here's the floor pans on the rear. They look next to mint on the rear. Now we are looking at the front cross member or cross support. I don't know what you want to call that. But that's where the torsion bars go through. And that looks really good on the passenger side. But when you come over to the driver's side, you can see it's completely rotted out. So what we're gonna end up doing over here is we're gonna cut out all the rust. We're gonna patch that in with some new sheet metal and then we're gonna box the entire cross member in just like we're gonna do with the frame rails with some uh, thick steel plate just to strengthen it up. It's gonna be overkill, we're gonna fix this. I'm not gonna replace the entire rail. I'm just gonna be replacing the rotted out areas and beefing it up and adding some strength by adding some plate steel to it. 
And then here is the passenger front floor, zero rust, which is awesome. So the only rust on the floor that we have is over here on the driver's side. So yeah, we've got a big ass hole on the driver's side, not a big deal. I'll just cut that out and weld in a new uh, floor pan. Let's get out from under the car. I am tired of being underneath here. I've been underneath here all weekend and I'm sick of it. Get me out of here. Oh God. Oh, my ankle hurts. <laughs> oh, I hate sprained ankles. Well guys, that's gonna be it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and we'll catch you guys next time. I ciao, ciao.